Rachel is going to be all right. The knife damaged her brachial artery, but didn't cut it. She's out of surgery, and now she's resting. Chloe, what happened? I don't, I don't know. Everything happened so fast. Do you know who Damon Merrick is? Or why he hates you? I know exactly who Damon Merrick is. Start over and tell me everything. Did you and Rachel try to contact Sarah? I'm not going to chastise or blame you, Chloe. But I need the whole story. So, I got my dealer to meet us, since he knows Sarah. Frank Bowers. Yeah, that's right. But Damon showed up with him. What did Merrick want? I, I think he wanted to scare us, so he'd stop asking questions about his business. Is that how it became violent? It was, it was actually Rachel who got angry. She was furious that he wouldn't tell her where Sarah was. This is exactly what I've been afraid of. Rachel won't let anything stop her. It wasn't only that. She was already angry about Damon pushing me around. She is like her mother. Quick-tempered, rash. I've always been afraid of losing her the way I lost Sarah. What happened next? Damon had a knife out. And we all could see it. But then he said something that pissed Rachel off. And she just grabbed a piece of wood and hit him. And then he stabbed her. I keep thinking that maybe I could have done something. But... When he attacked her, I just froze. It's not your fault. And Frank held him off so we could get to the truck. I heard a scream. But I don't know what happened. And then... We were here. I appreciate you telling me the truth. What if Rachel still wants to meet Sarah? After all this... I'm hoping she'll finally see reason. I was told that if Rachel had arrived only a few minutes later, she might not have... Um... Thank you, Chloe. You saved my world. It will be some time before Rachel wakes up. I promise I'll let you know when she does. Okay. Thanks. Hey, Steph, how's Mikey? <sighs> Pretty good. Miss Amber just told me Rachel's going to be okay. I'm really glad. Yeah. Well, our room's just down the hall. You should come by. Okay, sure, definitely. Uh, 
I don't think I can sit still any longer. Might as well stretch my legs while I wait for Rachel to wake up. Mom brought so many of these home when Dad died, and not a single one described how I felt. Damn, are these all firefighters? Come on. <laughs> not that I have any coins anyway. Oh man, jackpot. Guess the citizens of Arcadia Bay aren't feeling so generous. Sean Prescott. What's he writing to the hospital about? Is this for real? Frank's business must be booming. Shit. I really hope you... Oh, shit. I know those guys. Uh, this doesn't look like the maternity wing. Uh, there's a sign for the prenatal class. I can't believe we're finally doing this. I'm so excited. <laughs> You're gonna be a good dad. <laughs> Guess I'm glad we stole their wine. Is that Mikey and Drew's dad? All right then. Thank you. Hi, Mr. North. That's me. And you are? I'm Chloe. You here to see Mikey? Yeah. How are, uh, how are things going? Oh, you know how it is. Ups and downs. Mikey's hurt, of course. But the doctors are saying it should heal up relatively quick. And Drew? Hey, maybe you heard. He's all set to go to Oregon State. Full ride for four years. That's... That's awesome. Hold on. You said you were Chloe. Mikey's mentioned you a few times now. I have a question maybe you can answer. Sure. Both of those boys have been acting a little, well, guilty lately. Yeah, I, I've been spending most of my time looking for work. I'm worried I missed something important. Do you know if anything's going on with them? Ah. Uh... No. Sorry. This weekend was actually the first time I really hung out with them. That's all right. I appreciate that you've been keeping my boys company. Mikey said he feels a lot safer around you. He's been seeming a little scared these days. I think my work situation's disappointed him. Both of them. Actually, in different ways. Sorry I'm laying all this on you. I've been trying to keep it light in there. That's okay. 
Uh, nice of you to listen. Do me a favor. Don't worry either of them with... Oh, excuse me. Chloe! Hey, you made it! Hey, Chloe. So, what have you all been up to? Yeah, homework, I guess? Yeah, homework. Totally. Sweet hair, by the way. I bet you could pull off Sailor Mercury. Uh, <laughs> thanks. Any news about Rachel? Her mom seemed hopeful. How'd she get hurt? You'll think I'm joking when I tell you, but I'm not. Why? What happened? Rachel was stabbed in the arm by Damon fucking Merrick. Yeah, that's not funny. Shit. You serious? Fuck that guy. It wasn't because of me, was it? Oh, no. We got our own set of problems with him. That's crazy. The whole thing makes me want to just... I swear, if I ever meet that shithead, I'm gonna... What? What are you gonna do when you meet Damon Merrick? Something terrible. Uh-huh. I am. Like... <laughs> Challenge him to a karaoke battle? <laughs> yeah, that's how we settle things on the street, huh? Okay. Throw dice at him. Criticize his taste in film. Okay. Tell him about a band he's probably never heard of, but should have. Enough! Anyway, we're glad Rachel's okay. Oh, uh, you should hang out here till she wakes up. Rachel's gonna be up soon. Should probably head over when I'm ready. Huh. <laughs> Those must be from Steph's parents. Hey, can I sign your cast? Yeah, definitely. Hmm, something nerdy, but not too nerdy. There you go. Cool. Tell Rachel She's got to come to board game night. Soon. Like he's entering into a cartoon contest? <laughs> I hope he wins. Look at that. Wells being nice for a change. What are you guys doing? I thought you'd never ask. I had to hide our game from the nurse. She thinks it's negatively affecting my mood. Elamon's backed himself into a pretty tight spot this time. He might not make it. Wait a sec. Calamastia. She can join Elamon in battle. Maybe the two of us together could actually make it out alive. Wait. You're into this nerd shit too? It's a game where I win if I make up crazy shit and act like a badass. So yes. I hate to be such a game master about it, but I'm pretty sure Chloe's character died last time. Oh, yeah. Wait a sec. Didn't you have that anklet of reincarnation in your inventory? Uh, yeah. I 
totally did have that thing. Holy shit! So you can actually swoop in and save my ass. What do you say? You gotta save Elamon, right? We rejoin Elamon as he majestically soars over the traveler's path. He glances over his shoulder, only to discover his pursuers are right behind him. Wait, you can fly? I'm a wizard. Plus, I kind of have to since you cut my feet off last time. Oh, yeah. I totally did that. You totally did. This game is awesome. Elamon comes around a corner to discover Calamastia, the elf barbarian, sitting by a fire, roasting squirrels. Uh, <laughs> greetings, powerful Elamon. From whence do you run? Uh, uh float. Or... Whatever. Funny you should ask. I'm being chased by an army of dragonkin. Remember when you killed that jailer and took his key to free the prisoners in the prison camp? <laughs> Turns out you offended their entire clan. And they're after me now. Sounds like you could use a hand from your favorite elf barbarian. Well, you did manage to inflict an insane amount of damage on everything. Suddenly, Dragonkin scouts rush in, clawing you while your backs are turned. Take four damage. You're up first. What do you want to do? I do a spinning slash. Sixteen. Good enough. You spin around, using your axe to slash all six Dragonkin at once. They all drop dead in a puddle of blood. Hey, nice one. Don't celebrate yet. You begin to hear the clinking armor of hundreds of dragonkin warriors. The sound grows louder as they grow closer. And this is why I was running. Ah, come on. You can totally take these fuckers down. I just killed six of them. Those were scouts, Chloe. Warriors are four times that hard. Oh. Well, shit. <laughs> Running and living. Yeah, sounds like a plan. You sprint as fast as you can until you come across a fork in the road. One path leads into the mouth of a deep, dark cave. The other takes you into a dense, misty forest. Which way do you go? Can I, you know, feel it out first? Totally. Roll for perception. Ugh. Thirteen? Despite the desolate look of the caves, your elvish senses tell you that something does in fact live inside. Something unfriendly. That's some solid intel. Next. You turn to the forest. Though it seems still, you sense that what's inside is not entirely at rest. Okay. Come on. The dragonkin are still behind us. All right. To the forest it is. Let's go. As soon as you enter the shade of the great trees, it becomes eerily silent and very cold. You notice the stones on the ground are arranged in strange patterns, creating huge designs all over the forest floor. I think I know what this is. I follow the stones. The stones lead you to the center of the forest, where you see a mysterious glowing idol upon a golden pedestal. A forest idol? I could use that to regrow my feet. Help me steal it. Oh, yeah. Now this is my kind of skill challenge. Awesome. Roll for idle theft. Uh, 
eight. As you approach the idol, you dash your foot against one of the stones and fall face first into the dirt. A bony hand shoots up from the ground right before your eyes. You feel the ground move and jump up just in time for the undead soldier buried there to sit up from his shallow grave. Dirt and pebbles cascade down his fleshless torso. Then, the ground beneath you shakes. Bony, rotting hands shoot up from the ground all around as an entire army of undead warriors rises from their graves. You have disrupted the undead forest, an ancient burial ground for fallen soldiers. They surround you now, armed to the teeth, bony faces grinning. Run! Luckily, the undead have a very low running speed. The party flees safely, but the soldiers aren't far behind. As you near the edge of the forest, you hear the familiar boom, boom, boom of heavy footsteps. Out of the shadows and into your path steps Durgeron. Oh shit, is that me? You're gonna play? I'm gonna kick your ass. This is awesome. What do I do? Say something threatening. Uh, you shall not pass. I've heard you sound more threatening when ordering pizza. You got this, Drew. I mean, Durgaron. Weak, foolish creatures. You were lucky to escape me the last time. But fortune does not shine forever. When I'm done with you, death shall seem a quiet reprieve. <laughs> Word. I wrote that for him. <laughs> Shut up. Now remember, Durgeron is still wearing his Bracer of Fire immunity and is impervious to all of Elamon's battle spells. Yeah, as it should be. It's your move. So this says I have some special kind of magical frost sword that does some... A like ice slice thing. I'm doing that. Here we go. A 20? Shit. That's good, right? Durgaron, roll to reduce damage. You pull out your magically frozen blade and then unleash the ice slice to end all other ice slices. Ice slice. Durgaron takes 21 damage but is still standing strong. I'll swing my giant ass sword at your head. The elf just manages to duck under your blade, avoiding damage, but getting a pretty nasty haircut. You'll pay for that. I feel like Rage Slam might be good. <laughs> Bring it. Channeling your immense fury, you try to lift Durgeron into the air for a body slam, badass style. Twelve. Uh, sixteen? Durgeron's stronger than you think. He reverses your grip and lifts you up, throwing you through the air easily. Ha! Bullshit! You land in an embarrassingly awkward way. Take five damage. I take it all back. This game is... dumb. I kick her while she's down. <sighs> Make that 16 damage. Back to you. I call upon Elamon. Help an elf out. Hmm. I know. I cast Clairvoyance. What would you like to see? Durgeron's weakness. Hey, what? An image forms in your mind. You see a small, adorable gnome bard singing a sweet song in a city street. Suddenly, Durgeron appears standing over him. He snatches up the bard, carries him to the sea, and throws him like a football far into the storm-tossed currents. Immediately after, he grabs his throwing shoulder in pain. You hurt your shoulder tossing a gnome into the ocean? I don't know what she's talking about. Didn't you throw that marching band kid in the pool last week? 
Not that you can prove. I stab at his right side, where he can't fend me off. Come at me. She lunges for you. You try to raise your sword, but pain shoots through your arm like lightning. Her axe gets you right in the ribcage, dropping you to your knees. This one's all yours. Skull bomb! Yes! Wait, skull bomb? I ignite a very small sun inside my enemy's head. Though his bracer shields him from the heat, the gravitational force of the sun causes Durgeron's head to implode until it disappears with a bloody pop. <laughs> Finally! Whew, man. Finally? That was like two seconds. I barely got to play. Nicely done, Alamon. Uh, if Durgeron's dead, I grab his bracer. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, the bracelet of fire resistance. Bracer of fire immunity. Whatever. You burst forth into the majestic meadow, horizon to horizon. All you can see is lush, green fields full of birds, flowers, and dragonkin. What? Instead of chasing you, they circle around to set a trap. And you just walked right into it. As the dragonkin ahead prepare to attack, the army of undead arrive behind you. <sighs> We're surrounded and screwed. Ah, come on, Elamon. I'm sure you've got some sweet spell that'll save us. Uh, I do have searing crystal. Perfect! Searing crystal, these fuckers! You don't get it. This isn't just another battle spell. This crystal is like... Like dropping a nuke. It'll kill everything. Including you and me. Actually, you did grab Durgeron's bracer of fire immunity. Whoever wears it would survive. See? Problem solved. <sighs> but there's only one bracer. <sighs> Mikey loves his character. I... I can't just let him get Elamon killed. Elamon, keep the bracer and cast the spell. I'll hold them off so you can survive. It won't work. Look at all of them. I should have never started this quest. I'm too weak. You're Elamon, freaking wizard of the Third Circle, foremost advisor to King Tiberius, and sworn defender of Avalon. Avernon. Yeah, that. See, you can do anything. Wow. You actually remember all of that? But I've never even used this spell before. What if I roll too low? I believe in you. I know you'll roll high. You're the only party member I've ever had who's actually helped me. I can't leave you behind. People must be lining up to adventure with the great Elamon. You could replace me in no time. No. I won't abandon the best partner I've ever had. Mikey. I cast... Shield of Stars. Oh boy. A dome of blinding light surrounds the party. It captures the attention of all surrounding creatures.